Hey folks, Matt here. Today I'm talking about Transformers Siege, which is an interesting line to say the least, as it was a return to form after the gimmick film Prime Wars trilogy. And today, we're talking about perhaps the most famous of the Autobot Triple Changers, Springer, released in 2019 in the third wave of the Voyager size class, and I'm not alone in reviewing this. Howdy, people. For those unaware, this isn't the first modern toy of Generation 1 Springer. It's not even the first modern triple-changing Springer. That honor goes to the Thrilling 30 release, based on Nick Roach's last stand at the Wreckers design. Meanwhile, Siege Springer is more or less pulled from the Sumbo cartoon. I'll be covering the Thrilling 30 figure on my own channel, but as for this toy, lead the way, Mav. Siege Springer in robot mode, as Rune mentioned, is heavily inspired by the original G1 cartoon design, however I think it's kind of boring looking. Like look at it compared to the original cartoon design, which was more round and bulkier, giving it a more unique look, where in Siege he's very blocky and square, kind of making him boring as he just blends into a lot of other characters with similar aesthetics. However, that doesn't make him bad, I just personally don't like the aesthetic for Splinger. I do, however, like the detailing, as the greebling and lining is nice, and it isn't classing as aesthetically, surprisingly enough. The paintwork as it is, is super nice, especially the yellow paint. It's a nice shade and stands out well. Anything to add, Rune? Plenty. For one, the resemblance to the cartoon model, while not exact, I'd say is still really good. From the head sculpt, to the shoulder pads, though they're not at an angle here, to the hood chest, and he's just all around stocky and powerful looking, unlike his Thrilling 30 counterpart, who's both taller and leaner in comparison. Deco-wise, Siege Springer is, shall we say vivid, done in yellow, three shades of green. Even the lower legs have a blue tint to them, as opposed to being straight up grey like in the show. The figure sports battle damage paint on his back, chest, shoulder pads, and shins. Said battle damage is a recurring theme of Siege, though it's not to everyone's liking. Yeah, I think the battle damage works, though it's mostly due to the color choice, being a nice silver rather than other choices. If other figures in this line had colors like this, I feel the battle damage would be more liked by fans. I think that's all we have left aside from posability, so Rune, you got the stage. Siege Springer has a ball-jointed head. His arms can't quite splay all the way out for a T-pose, but the range is still decent. His shoulders swivel vertically, though this bit of plastic prevents full rotation. You have swivels below his shoulders. The elbows bend over 90 degrees. You'll need to fold the shoulder pads back for that to work. The wrists swivel all the way around, the waist turns, but is blocked by both this spinal piece and his hip plates. However, the hips themselves splay all the way out and swing back and forth. You also have thigh swivels, the knees bend over 90 degrees, lastly the ankles swivel up and down and tilt like you wouldn't believe. Sadly, I have two big gripes, both also addressed in Kit Catastrophe's review. Firstly, it doesn't take much to unpeg the knees. You have to grip his calves for the joints to work. Second, he's pretty top-heavy, and those aforementioned ankle swivels are both loose and are placed a little too far forward, neither of which helps with balancing. Luckily, I too have Siege Fire Drives effects parts. Ta-da! Even if I got unlucky with mine, the ankles really should have been ratcheted. Could they have pulled it off? Hard to say, given the complex engineering and multiple transformations. On that note... The transformation to car mode is simple, though I have a few issues, one of which being the chest. It's not a bad step and I don't think it will break, but it makes me uncomfortable. And an issue with one of my copies is one of the clips are broken, but I'll go more in depth in a minute. But Rune, what are your thoughts on the car? Well, the armored car is definitely that from the cartoon, both in deco and form. Presumably even the show realized that a rotorless helicopter does not a good alien car make. Okay, the G1 toy's transformation was slightly more involved than that, but the alt mode still looked too similar. So for both the show, and by extension, Siege, the fenders surpassed the bumper to further distinguish the two. It's not much, and we'll get into that later, but it's still a step up. Also, because they have that design to work off of, it's one of the few Siege vehicles to actually look Cybertronian. One thing I like about the toy in general is how the colors are applied so that no section of any mode is either too bland or a garish mess. Everything seems properly balanced, unlike the Thrilling 30 figure, which favors the robot and helicopter, while in car mode, the yellow and green abruptly cut off, leading to a sea of gray. Thankfully, Siege Springer reverts this, and another thing I'll give this over the Thrilling 30 toy, both alt modes are rock solid. 
I think this is probably the best of the two alternative modes. The detail on it is sublime with the amount of just molded detail that adds a lot to the alt mode. However, there are a lot of issues such as just the back of my copy. The yellow paint has started chipping. The pegs you put the sword are, are kind of loose on my copy. And something that doesn't bother me but I can see bothering other people is how the thighs are visible on the side. My copy's wheels don't really roll too well. And the final issue is that the clips on the bottom are very easy to break, as they are very thin. However, it still looks good, so isn't that big of a deal. These are just issues that are still there, so I wanted to bring them up. Anyway, Rune, I'll let you cover the helicopter transformation. And what a transformation it is. For one, the entire rear assembly undergoes a series of literal twists and turns to convert into the tail. It doesn't just slide back, and neither do the fenders. Instead, they unpeg from the front, the struts fold up at a hinge that connects the blue piece to the grey piece, then the fenders re-peg into different slots. Despite the admittedly similar looking alt modes, getting between them is satisfyingly complex. Okay, so this is my least favorite mode of the three, but before I talk about my issues, I will admit, going from point A to point B is one of the more interesting transformations I've messed with, however my issue still stands, so, starting at the fenders of the front, while yes they are in a different place, don't really change the shaping of the alt mode enough for me, as they aren't in different enough positions for me to suspend my disbelief, like say, the Thrilling 30 mold. While yes, I don't have it, the images I've seen changes the silhouette in a more unique way than this. The fins of the helicopter mode are way too small in my opinion, and the back of the helicopter is just the back of the car extended, and it isn't even like they made the wheels look like a helicopter rotor, so it's just kind of, not lazy, but feels half-baked. But that's just my thoughts, Rune. What about yours? As someone who owns the previous generation Springer, I can kinda see where you're coming from. While both have involved transformations, in terms of where parts end up, the rear segments on Thrilling 30 Springer turn inside out, concealing the wheels and revealing new sculpted and painted details in the process. On Siege Springer, the rear wheels are trying to emulate the tail rotor, but they're still obviously wheels. It's not that the helicopter looks bad, far from it. It's colourful, proportionate, and again, fairly show accurate. But in contrast to other triple changes that say, turn upside down or inside out, there aren't a lot of new parts or details outside of things like the small winglets. So I can see why some would find Seed Springer boring, due to the lack of visual variety between the two vehicles. I don't, and in the end it's more of a problem with Springer's inherent design than with the figure itself. However, the same cannot be said for a minor issue I have, but I'll touch on that when we talk accessories and gimmicks. All in all, I like both alt modes, though I'll concede that the helicopter is the lesser of the two, due to a few armoured car extras. Compromise is the way of the triple changer. Yeah, unless your name is Snapdragon, you will have some form of compromise. But as you mentioned earlier, accessories! Springer comes with two W10 Air Slice Chopper Blades, C10 Void Blaster, the J10 Warp Blaster, and finally, this thing, which is mostly used for helicopter mode, though it can be used to store his accessories in both robot and car mode. They all look good, but I prefer using his swords the most, as I feel it fits him best. I also occasionally love putting the helicopter blade set up so you can spin it. I know it's kind of childish, but it makes the dopamine hit the brain, so I don't care. As with pretty much all Siege toys, Springer has a multitude of 5mm ports for armament or weaponizer combinations, and 3mm pegs for effects parts. There are also 3 ports at the back for a flight stand if you have one. Going back to the accessories, the swords are made of a somewhat soft plastic. Not the worst I've encountered, but it's still worth addressing, meaning they're prone to warping. They also form the helicopter rotor blades. How's that gonna go down? He's got better things to do tonight than fly. I have complained a lot in this review, however, I do enjoy this figure a lot. Like, a lot a lot. It has a lot of posability, a very unique transformation, and while yes, this isn't my aesthetic choice for Springer, I can see the appeal of it. And it's probably one of the best Voyagers of the line. But though he isn't the best, that goes to a certain red truck. So Rune, what are your thoughts on this? Despite Thrilling 30 Springer being critically acclaimed in his own right, I suspect many still hoped that the Autobots' answer to Han Solo would get a toy based on his original cartoon appearance. Then Siege came along, and it delivered, for the most part. The alt modes, while flawed, are still pretty successful for a multi-changer. The robot mode looks great, and has plenty of articulation to go around. 
Plus, the figure in general has the combat crossplay compatibility that makes the War for Cybertron trilogy so much fun. But, as much as I could gush, the unstable legs and ankles cannot be ignored. And while Kit provided a good fix, we shouldn't have to. Plus, as acknowledged, some may find his alt modes too similar to be interesting. In the end, I give Siege Springer a silver medal, but he comes close to gold, and if you ranked him as such, I honestly wouldn't argue with you. Of the two modern triple-changing Springers, I actually recommend the Thrilling 30 figure first. Whether they'll redeco this toy for Studio Series without the battle damage remains to be seen. Well, thanks for the collab, Mav. No problem, Maroon. Thanks for coming on. Anyway, this is Mav, and I'm signing out, and next time we're covering Generation Selects Combat Megatron. So I'll see you then. Bye. Till all are one.